Dr. Eric Stelnicki. I'm a pediatric plastic and craniofacial surgeon. Uh, I'm also the medical director of the cleft and craniofacial team at Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. I've been a cleft and craniofacial surgeon for um, approximately nine years here in South Florida, uh, and I run our, our multidisciplinary group where we see all sorts of children with multiple problems, uh, uh, many of which are related to deformities of the skull. It's definitely becoming more of an epidemic problem across the United States and that has uh, really, really spread and developed since the World Health Organization and the American Academy of Pediatrics um, rightfully decided to sleep children on their back in order to decrease the risk of sudden infant death, death syndrome. The, uh, the problem is that the fallout uh, is that uh, children's heads being soft are easily deformed by the constant pressure on the back of their head, yielding a progressive flatness that uh, is only accentuated over time if the child is not repositioned at an early stage. Things that increase the chance of developing plagiocephaly are uh, babies who were, you know, um, you know, stuck in the birth canal, had a very cone-shaped head when they were born, uh, torticollis or a tightening of the neck muscle that predisposes the child to tilt and turn the head in one direction uh, definitely increases those the risks. Also, prematurity, uh, being in an incubator or especially intubated, uh, will increase the uh, the chance of developing a plagiocephaly or a scaphocephaly, which is another type of skull deformity. I'm Frank Vicari, and I'm a pediatric plastic surgeon at the Children's Memorial Hospital. Uh, I'm a craniofacial surgeon as well, and I've been doing that for the past 18 years. A few years ago, we started a team specifically to address the uh, positional acquired asymmetries of the cranial vault because we were seeing that in, in increased number, and we uh, call that our Center for Complex Facial Analysis, specifically the Head Shape Evaluation Program. When we decide to put a child in a cranial orthotic, specifically a star band, we have a number of criteria. The most obvious is if the asymmetry uh, has been somewhat long-standing and not responded to conservative measures. Those conservative measures are things like repositioning, tummy time, and often physical therapy. Well, I started noticing her spot. Um, usually, it was pretty obvious initially, because even right after birth, she was favoring that right side, because it just kind of, which led me to believe that maybe she was positioned in utero that way. Um, and so usually around two months or so, you start noticing that they're just favoring, so it goes flatter and flatter. Um, and I really didn't get concerned until we started trying to change her positioning, and it was not working. It was not getting better in any way. It was actually getting worse because she was favoring that side. My name is Ari Yuri Camargo. I am a registered occupational therapist. I've been treating uh, babies uh, with cranial problems for um, a number of years, since actually since 1999. Tummy time is excellent to uh, help children hit their developmental milestones on time. Um, since there is a lot of activities that start on their bellies, um, and it's a starting position for others like going on all fours to sitting upright, balance and so forth. Uh, tummy time is essential uh, to allow babies to go through their developmental milestones on time. Well, the STAR scanner has revolutionized the way that I've, I've, I'm treating uh, my babies with plagiocephaly uh, in, in many, many, many ways. Uh, as a parent, I truly appreciate the way that it is a quick um, way of capturing uh, the head shape, capturing measurements that are able to be duplicated and stored uh, uh, for future reference. Uh, not only number-wise, but also a visual three-dimensional image that can be compared from beginning to end, and we can see the sequence of 
the treatment and how the child is improving. Uh, also, it is an excellent way to uh, capture the image because the child is happy um, and uh, it only takes two seconds, literally, to get this image. Another benefit of the STAR scanner is its capability as a research tool. With more than 50 STAR scanners positioned worldwide, opportunities for multi-center research studies abound. Potential research includes comparison of changes following endoscopic and cranial vault reconstructive surgical procedures, the effectiveness of repositioning or therapeutic efforts, and analysis of the effectiveness of different cranial remolding designs. I put trade young markers on, and those are going to allow us to <laughs> align the scans each time. And basically, this is a, a eye-safe laser. Uh, there are two lasers on each side, safer than the kind at the grocery store, not unlike the kind of laser that would be in your printer. And so uh, it's been built with safety in mind. The laser pulses. The baby could stare at it. It wouldn't cause a problem. Uh, so this is the safest laser that's available on the market today, and that's why we made it that way. So four lasers and eight cameras capture the shape of uh, Bailey's head as that laser crosses over her face. Wow. So um, it takes less than two seconds of actually going from um, her chin up to the top of her head. So I'll show you with the baby doll. Okay. We're, I'm going to show you how to layer in, and I'll ask you to hold. You can stand a little bit off the side here. You can hold her arms. Make sure she doesn't push off against you. Okay. You can hold her arms. I'm going to hold her chin mm -hmm. and watch now as, uh, as it moves. And then we'll look at the scan to make sure it looks good. That scan was perfect. And, oh, wow. and that's all there is to it. Excellent. So it, it really is a great technology. You know, I really didn't want to start the whole process with a traumatic event like casting, and, but that was kind of our only option at first. We believe scanning is a far superior way uh, to casting. Uh, when I initially began practice, we casted every child, um, and it was quite a traumatic experience for most of these kids. Families report nonstop crying for 20 years during the casting process. And then on top of that, there was some, uh, depending on how the cast was removed and the experience of the, of the technician applying the cast, there was variability in terms of the quality of the band that was produced. With the surface scanner, we get, a, we get exact measurements of what the patient's problems are. Uh, we get uh, exact quantitative and qualitative measurements of volume changes and, and point irregularities, and we are able to produce a, uh, a, a really a perfectly designed band uh, without any negative effects on the child in terms of trauma from being casted and blindfolded during this 20-minute period. Uh, it also then allows us to go back uh, when the child comes back in for follow-up and see the changes every time they come in and quantify the changes that we're seeing uh, with the correction. Uh, so it, uh, it helps everybody remember how deformed the skull was because as the baby gets bigger and, and starts looking better, sometimes people forget and we can really see and, and show the whole world the great changes that, um, that, are, that are occurring as a result of the star band use. We found out about um, this place that uses the scan and he really, he did well. I mean, it took two seconds, it was done, we could see it on the computer screen, it was really, you know, very enlightening as far as how the head shape looked. We used the STAR scanner to objectively and quantitatively follow our treatment plan. Once the scan is taken, it is immediately sent to Orth America to carve the three-dimensional shape for fabrication. Each mold is first modified to improve the symmetry and proportion. Then the foam and plastic are heated and thermoformed over the modified cast to create a star band that will address each child's unique deformity. The North America Star Band and Star Scanner program is a very complete program. Uh, we've managed over 35,000 children with head shape problems very successfully with this program because one of the benefits is that you can use the Star Scanner to document the, the success of the treatment program. You can look at children before, during, and after treatment with excellent documentation about the head shape and get information about volumes, about symmetry at multiple cross-sections, and really be able to assess whether the program is working. 
The star band itself is available in five different styles, so each band completely addresses a specific head shape deformity. So the options that are available to families with, uh, with the star band and star scanner treatment through North America are far greater than in any other uh, type of program.